On the outside, the surface of this lake looks like the aftermath of a disaster. Empty tree trunks spike out of the turquoise waters. The lake is surrounded by mountains, making it a quiet but unsettling place. But those who dare to swim under these dangerous waters will soon discover a whole new world. This isn't the beginning of a fairy tale. It's the actual story of Kayindi Lake, located in Sati, Kazakhstan. Back in 1911, an earthquake caused a major landslide in this location. The valley created eventually filled up with rainwater, practically submerging the forest. The trees that are located above the waters might look very sad, but beneath the surface, they remind you of an underwater forest. Since the waters are crystal clear most of the time, you can still see this fascinating view even from its shores. The ice-cold water makes this lake so tricky and, at times, even dangerous. And don't forget about all the algae, plants, and submerged trees that can rapidly become risky obstacles. Hey, I enjoy a steamy hot bath, but this boiling lake I'll tell you about now is really the stuff of scary dreams. It's located on the Caribbean island of Dominica, and its waters have temperatures between 180 and 197 degrees Fahrenheit. And that's just around the edges, since no one has ever dared to reach the middle of the lake to measure its core temperature. It's true that the heat can go down from time to time, but you never know when these waters may start to boil again. The place is also dangerous because of the gases it releases, such as carbon dioxide. It doesn't smell nice, trust me, but that's mostly because of the sulfur stuck in the steamy air. This seemingly calm lake also carries a dangerous surprise. Lake Manan, located in West Province, Cameroon, it's one of the few erupting lakes on the whole planet, similar to a volcano. And most of the time, it does so without any warnings. Its last eruption dates back to 1894, when it caused serious damage. The chemical mechanism of such lakes works like a can of soda that you shake before opening. There are risky gases on the bottom of the waters, so any disturbance on the surface may trigger their eruption. Natron Lake in Tanzania may be beautiful to watch because of its unique reddish coloring, but it's definitely not a place you'd want to take a swim in. While the water is extremely salty, it also combines with algae, which, by the way, are responsible for the coloring. And that's not even the riskiest thing about it. Natron Lake has pH levels so high that they become corrosive. If you dampen a piece of dyed material in this lake, it'll soon be stripped of its color. These high levels of acidity can also cause serious problems to the human skin. It's not all bad for some creatures, as Lake Natron is the only home to over 2.5 million small flamingos. These acidic and brackish waters support their survival, so it's no wonder they like to stick around. Lake Nicaragua's danger factor has less to do with chemistry and more to do with its inhabitants. It's located on the border of Costa Rica and Nicaragua and is the largest freshwater lake in Central America. When you first look at it, you won't think it can be dangerous. But because of the bull sharks inhabiting it, I wouldn't recommend taking a swim. Sharks tend to be unpredictable and at times intimidating creatures. Plus, they will eat everything if needed. Scientists initially believed this species of shark was only found in this lake. But they soon discovered that people had seen the same sharks in the Caribbean Sea. These astonishing creatures not only cross a distance of over 120 miles to get here, but can also adapt to freshwater, something not all fish can do. Belize's Great Blue Hole may seem alluring to divers. I mean, it has a gorgeous deep blue color and is pretty close to the mainland, about 62 miles. The problem is that beneath the surface of these tranquil waters is a mixed-up series of tunnels which contain many types of coral and other wildlife. These caves are what makes diving through the Great Blue Hole tricky. More so, specialists discover that deeper into the waters, there are fewer and fewer creatures. Why? Because of a hidden layer of hydrogen sulfide that spans over the whole width of the sinkhole. Since there's no oxygen, no creature can ever survive this deep into the hole. Lake Lanier is the largest lake in the state of Georgia. It has a lot of visitors each year, about 11 million, so that's about the same number as visiting the Louvre Museum in Paris. Despite its popularity, a lot of accidents happen on this lake, and nobody knows for sure why. 
one of the explanations may lie beneath the surface of this mysterious lake. There's a lot of debris and rubble in there, along with random objects that have been tossed in, like boats, lawn chairs, and even fishing wire. All this creates a tricky underwater obstacle course. With the added low visibility on the surface of the lake, this place can become risky to navigate. Another one of those lakes that looks like someone might have overdone with editing is the Grand Prismatic Spring, located in Yellowstone National Park, which stretches into the states of Wyoming, Montana, and Idaho. Swimming here is completely prohibited. Why? It's 189 degrees Fahrenheit in the center, almost close to boiling temperatures, and the outermost ring reaches around 131, hence the colors. Since the center of the water is way too hot for any life to make it, there's nothing clouding the surface. The lack of any living organisms here creates that vivid blue that looks almost painted over. On the small Mediterranean island of Cyprus, there's not a lot of rain during the summer. That's why some bodies of water here become so dry that in certain areas, they get covered in a layer of baked salt. It's the case for the Larnaca Salt Lake. Now don't be fooled by the eerie landscape. These lands can easily become a trap. That's because it's easy to get confused about what's actually a dry surface and what's just a thin layer of salt on top of water or mud. More so, underneath the crust are salt crystals, which can cause problems for people's skin. Samisen Hole is one of the most dangerous places to swim in the whole of Thailand. It's because it's very deep, reaching 280 feet, and gets extremely dark. At certain points, as divers get lower, they can even reach places with zero visibility. No wonder a lot of people get confused and can't seem to find their way up anymore. The largest lake in Africa, and the third largest lake in the entire world, is called Lake Victoria. Not all of its waters are unsafe for people, but some regions can rapidly cause problems. Why? Particularly because it has its own isolated weather system, and that makes the weather really unreliable. It can go from bright and sunny to terrible in a matter of seconds. I mean, who would want to get caught swimming in the middle of a storm, right? Pustoyi Lake is located in Siberia, so I'm guessing I don't need to tell you the waters here get extremely cold. But if you look at the lake, there's nothing out of the ordinary with these waters. Hmm, is that completely true? Eh, most likely not. And people tend to avoid swimming here at all costs, even if they can resist the freezing cold waters. So, what makes Lake Pustovi so mysterious and dangerous? Well, nothing seems to want to live here, and scientists have yet to discover why. They tried to fill the lake with many types of fish and various plant species to see if they could survive in the waters, but the results were hmm, disappointing. Since we don't know exactly what makes it so difficult to survive here, don't go running for your swimming trunks just yet. It's best if you stay away. Hey, you don't have to tell me twice. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side. Let's check out one interesting town surrounded by mountains and woods in upstate New York. This place sits right on a big lake, and the city is called Lake George. People like to come here to go fishing, boating, and take up other water activities. You can meet many fishers, athletes, and a screaming man standing by the shore. Lake George is one of the most popular places in the northern part. Wait a minute, what? A screaming man? What does it mean? Yeah, people come to the shore, look towards the lake and the mountains, and just scream loudly. It looks pretty weird from the outside. Here's a young guy screaming, then he leaves, and a girl stands in his place. She starts screaming too, and then she offers you to do the same. Okay, you come to the spot where she was standing, turn towards the water, and shout. Wow! The sound of your voice echoes back to you. You hear yourself as if the sound wave passed through a giant megaphone. Your scream sounds distorted. It's unbelievable. You get closer to the shore and start screaming again. But this time, the magic is gone. You hear your usual scream. You return to that point, and here's the sound of your cry rising to you again with an echo. But how does this happen? Look where you're standing, the girl tells you. You're standing on a round concrete platform with an engraved image of a compass. 
right on the compass, you see a blue map of the lake. In the center of this pattern, two compass lines intersect and form the X symbol. Anyone who stays in this exact spot and shouts towards the lake will hear an incredible echo of their voice. It's as if your scream is coming back to you from another dimension. But the most exciting thing is that people standing nearby don't hear it. They see you as just a screaming person with an ordinary voice. They can hear the echo only in this X spot. Scientists still can't explain this acoustic phenomenon or figure out the reason for this behavior of the sound waves. All they have is guesses and theories. The concrete platform is surrounded by a small curved wall from the lakeside. Some people think that your voice resonates from this wall and creates this sound effect. Many places have similar semicircular walls, but they can't play such an acoustics trick. Another theory says that mountains and water somehow create the echo effect. There's also an old legend according to which a magical creature appeared at this spot. It shouted towards the water, and its wisdom has echoed throughout the lake ever since. I still think the sound resonates from the wall, but let's move on. We have more places to go. The next incredible location we're going to drop by is in California. Welcome to Lake Berryessa. Just stand on the shore and watch. Everything seems normal. Beautiful nature, clean, calm water. But there's a huge deep hole in this lake into which millions of cubic feet of water are pouring per second. But don't worry, this is not a natural anomaly or a tunnel to the underworld. It's the glory hole, and people created it. Lake Berryessa is in the area where the farming town of Monticello used to stand. In the last century, people built a dam next to the lake. During the rains, the water level rose and overflowed beyond the edges of the dam. To solve this problem, engineers built a vast hole. To give you an idea of how vast it is, imagine an ant standing on the edge of your bathtub with water flowing through the drain hole. The glory hole is as big for you as the drain hole would be for the ant. The water goes through a long horizontal tunnel and enters the nearest bay. The glory hole is a local attraction and a popular place for tourists. Now let's move to the Caribbean region for another fascinating location. Here, among the clear blue sea, you can find a unique lake on one of the dreamlike islands. Its entire territory looks like a giant concrete platform. But don't swim in it. Steam emanates from the lake's surface because of high temperatures. Almost all the water here is liquid asphalt. Pitch Lake is the largest asphalt deposit in the world. Its depth is 250 feet which means that a passenger Boeing can fit there in an upright position. Scientists haven't yet studied the lake thoroughly. They think there's a fault in the Earth's crust underneath it. Natural gases and oil pass through this crack and mix with water. Then, all this liquid goes through many chemical reactions and turns into asphalt. The lake contains about 10 million tons of hot material, according to rough estimates. Theoretically, no life can exist in such conditions, but scientists discovered a colony of microbes there. This means that life outside of our planet can exist. Saturn's largest moon, Titan, has many hydrocarbon lakes on its surface, similar to Pitch Lake. And if the simplest forms of life can exist here, in the asphalt lake, they may also survive on Titan. Our next unusual lake is in a pretty unexpected place in the driest region on Earth. And these are not hot dunes and lifeless plains. This region is in Antarctica. A dry area is not where it's hot, but where there's almost no precipitation. The desert is not heat and sand, but the absence of life. Some areas of Antarctica meet these two criteria. It's so cold here that a mug of tea can freeze in a minute. But the lake we want to see doesn't freeze. Although it's not even a lake, but a pond, because of its tiny size and depth of several inches. It resembles a large puddle of icy water. It doesn't freeze because Don Juan Pond is one of the saltiest reservoirs on the planet. Salt prevents water from turning into ice. But the most interesting thing is the lake's origin. Scientists still don't know how it appeared here. 
Our next stop is in the southern part of Tunisia. In 2014, a strange lake appeared out of nowhere, right in the middle of the desert. No one knows when the lake was born, since this part of the region is sparsely populated, and people don't live in the area around the lake. Shepherds passing by were the first to have noticed the lake. They told the locals about it. A few hours later, hundreds of people came to the place to swim in the clear, cool water. The lake became a popular place, but after a few days, something strange happened. The water turned dark green. The locals didn't care about this and continued to bathe in the lake. But when scientists and geologists arrived at the place, they immediately declared that the water was dangerous. They said the lake was stagnating. It didn't refresh itself from underground streams, and the rains didn't feed it either. The water became moldy and dirty, and then turned green. The lake contained algae and a lot of harmful bacteria dangerous to the human body. Scientists also found out that the land in this region had phosphate deposits. This substance can decay and become radioactive. But the locals didn't take the scientists' words seriously. Just imagine that you're wandering in the desert under the scorching sun and notice a cool green lake. Few people will refuse to jump in there. The origin of this lake remains a mystery. Some experts think that heavy rains have filled a hole in the ground with water. Water has probably accumulated in the shadow of rocks surrounding the canyon. But another, more frightening theory says that an earthquake formed the lake. The seismic activity must have torn the Earth's crust above the water table. Then, underground springs spilled out of the depths and filled this crevice. This means that all the water that came here can pour back out. Imagine pulling the plug out of the drain hole in a bathtub. Any small earthquake can make the lake's plug fly out. In this case, the gap can take all the water back underground. So let's hope there won't be any swimmers in the lake at that moment. In Utah, in the middle of the desert, there are striped ponds that seem to be something from another world. The color gets even more dramatic, contrasting with the red Moab Desert. The ponds have those stripes because of the evaporation. The more water there is, the more vibrant the blue shades appear. The electric blue color is artificial, though. People add cobalt blue dye, so the water absorbs more sunlight and evaporates faster. As the water disappears, the crystals of salt and potassium are left behind, which are gathered later for chemical production. You don't want to swim in there. Another unusual lake that has its looks thanks to evaporation is Spotted Lake in Canada. In winter and spring, it looks just like a regular lake. But in summer, when the sun gets scorching hot, some water evaporates, but small pools of minerals are left behind. The polka dot spots are usually green, yellow, and bluish. There are no two similar pools. They all have different colors and sizes. Don't get too close here, this place is quite sensitive. Now, if perfection is something you're after, head to Northern Ireland. The place, called the Giant's Causeway, has no extraordinary waters, but the surrounding stones and columns look so smooth and impeccable that it's kind of hard to believe they were created by nature. All those cracks were formed thanks to a volcanic eruption. But the legend has it, the site was made by a mythical giant named Finn McCool. <laughs> he must have been really cool. In Turkey, there's a spectacular site called Pamukkale, which means cotton castle in English. Again, legend has it that giants had something to do with it. This time, they left some cotton there to dry, and it later turned into those stunning formations. Scientists kind of disagree with it and claim that it's all about minerals left by the thermal waters. It's up to you who to believe. But there's one undoubtable thing. This place with turquoise thermal water has no look-alike in the world. If you ever pop in this place, don't miss a chance to take a look at ancient Roman ruins left there. Back in 1802, humanity spotted something they never saw before. The pink water. Nope, it wasn't some fancy strawberry lemonade or something. It was an actual source of flamingo pink water. Meet Lake Hillier, located in Western Australia. It's not hard to guess that it attracts people because of its unique color. It never changes and stays pink throughout the year. 
No giant spotted adding pink dye there, so this time it's all about algae, bacteria, and high salinity. It's totally safe to swim there, but nobody can do that. Regular tourists just can't visit it. Turns out Lake Hillier isn't the only pink water source out there. In Senegal, there's Lake Retva, which looks almost exactly the same. It looks like an extra-large milkshake for the same reasons – high salinity and algae that loves salt. These algae produce red pigments to help absorb sunlight, so the lake color gets even more intense in the dry season. The notorious Thor's Well isn't as dangerous as they say, but it looks a bit scary at high tide. The water fills it from underneath, bubbling and bursting up. Then this vigorous spray of water goes back into that hole, so it seems endless. One more place that depends on tides is Mont Saint-Michel in Normandy, France. The magnificent castle is surrounded by water, but not permanently. Choose the time wisely, it all depends on the moon. The highest tide can be seen 36 to 48 hours after a full moon. Chances are, if you come there at the wrong time, you'll see nothing but a couple of puddles. The Budagaika Crater in Siberia looks like a doorway to the neither. It's about a half mile long and nearly 300 feet deep, and it never stops growing. The deeper it gets, the more layers it has. They show what our planet looked like thousands of years ago, as the slumps reveal the used-to-be climates. The crater appeared back in the 60s, and it all started because of rapid deforestation. Trees no longer cast shades on the ground, and it got hotter. The permafrost melted, the soil cracked, and the crater appeared. In the middle of the Atacama Desert, Chile, you can spot a super weird thing. The rocks rise out of the sand right in the shape of a hand. No giant here again, just a sculptor artist who made it. Some desert rocks can even walk. Walking rocks, also known as sailing rocks, can move on their own and leave long tracks across one of the valleys in California. Scientists even installed GPS navigators on some of them, and they showed those rocks can move pretty fast. Many researchers believe it's all about temperatures. At night, the desert almost freezes over, and the sheets of ice formed underneath melt during the day, so the rocks literally slide. Gippsland Lakes, Australia, can glow at night. Bacteria get agitated in the water when the algae bloom, and their movements give that bioluminescent effect. Still, the beauty of red algae bloom is extremely misleading. Red algae contain high levels of ammonia, so think twice before diving in. It's safer to enjoy the scenery on the shore. Uh, just a tip, you should probably do that with your nose closed. The decaying algae doesn't smell like roses. Pew. Water often glows because of bioluminescent jellyfish, and so do caves. In New Zealand, there are glowing worms that emit greenish-blue luminescent light. You can see these guys only in total darkness. These worms are carnivores, and the main reason why they glow is to attract prey. So beware. They also make webs, just like spiders. To see them, head to the Waitomo Glowworm Caves. There are even guided tours. Chocolate Hills? Yummy! The name is explained by colors. Those hills in the Philippines have a range of brown and green colors. Have you seen a green chocolate, though? Mm. This spot has such a sweet nickname because the foliage gets brownish in the dry season. The hill shape is so regular that it's often mistaken for being artificial. Still, these are just some uplifted coral deposits, appeared because of rainwater. Just imagine a beach of ketchup spilled for miles and miles and a never-ending portion of french fries. Okay, it's just a dream, but a ketchup red beach exists in real life in China. It's called Punjin, and it's at least 18 miles long. Usually, either giants or algae are responsible for such phenomena. This time, these are algae. They turn red in fall and make this beach one of the most colorful in the world. Good news, it's open to the public, but only a small section. We've seen a red beach, off to red waters. Antarctica isn't only white, it can be red too. 
In the Taylor Glacier, there's a crimson waterfall coming from a super salty lake. The water is rich in iron, which forms rust when it reacts with oxygen. The water stays liquid even at sub-zero temperatures because of the high salinity. Glass Beach in California is another beach that looks so incredible that many people don't believe it's not made by humans. Well, they're partly right. The glittering, colorful glass stones used to be bottles dumped into the ocean. The waves took these bottles, broke them down, polished them to perfection, and voila, the beach is ready. Another thing created by accident is Fly Geyser in Black Rock Desert, Nevada. An energy company was drilling the soil in search of geothermal water, and boom! Today, it's a scalding fountain of green and red water rising up to 5 feet high. Well, let's play a guessing game. Why is the water colored? It was a random giant walking around who added some dye in there. Or it's the thermophilic algae. Right, it's all about the algae again. In western Venezuela, locals living close to the Catatumba River aren't afraid of lightning because they see it almost every single night within the clouds. It starts at around 7 p.m. and doesn't stop until dawn. The everlasting Catatumbo lightning once stopped for a few months, from January to March 2010. It was probably due to drought. No magic algae in this river, guys. Many believe it's just because of cold and warm air currents meeting around the area. Now, this island may not have incredible natural phenomenon, colorful algae, or even giants, but it has an enormous population of cats, which makes it literally the best place in the world, if you like cats. Cat Island in Japan has quite a plain story. Back in time, people would go there in search of silkworms. Mice feed on those worms, so cats were a must there. If tourists come there, they can stay in cat-shaped cabins. Clever. Naturally, no dogs are allowed there. Oh, and if you want to make a donation, you can always feed the kitty.